Hello, Mum. Don't you hello, Mum, me. What's all this? It's, it's jumble. I can see what it is. I can see where it is. I want to know why. Well, we're having a jumble sale. What, in my front parlour? No, 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 in the parish hall. You see, the boys were out. They was miles out. If they don't know my front parlour from the parish hall, it don't reflect very well on you as their scoutmaster. <laughs> Assistant scoutmaster, look, Mum, this isn't a mistake. Eddie, you've never done this on purpose. Yes. No, no, no Mum, it, it, it's only temporary. Honest, till this afternoon, it's temporary. Well, let me tell you, Eddie, it had better be. Where did you get all this muck? Oh, just locally. <laughs> Have you been round the museum? No. Yeah, that's only plaster, you know. I think it came out of a film studio. Well, I heard they was cutting down, but... Claudius? Claudius, he's meant to be Roman. Well, no wonder they declined and fell. <laughs> Here, if you're really interested, I'll have it put aside for you. Eddie, please. No, he'd make a very nice garden ornament. Thank you, I'll stick to my gnomes. <laughs> Oliver Twift by Charles Dickens. I say, they was a right ignorant lot in them days, wasn't they? No, that, that's right. They used to make their S's like F's. Well, if that's not dead ignorance, I'd like to know what he is. Where'd you get this? Well, you've seen that before. It's Jeff's. Ah, Jeff's? Yeah. It's not a... It's not an original Dickens, you know. It's a fake. Oh, Jeff said just to put it in with the rest of the junk. I mean, the <laughs> articles for the jumble sale. Oh, well, he should know. Him being a writer. Hello? What's this? Oh, it's just something else of Jeff's. He said for all the good it was, it might as well go in with the rest of the stuff. I don't know what it is. Well, I do. That's his typewriter. His type? He's not giving that away, is he? I don't understand. Neither do I, but I'm going to find out. You stand by and bring that in when I call you. <laughs> Hi, Ma. Aren't you authorising this morning? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh... Come mm. on, Jeff. What's the trouble? There's no trouble, Ma. Honestly, I haven't got a headache in the world. Oh, I know headache when I see one. What is it, money? Oh, no, I'm loaded. Uh, that might account for the headache with your father-in-law. It's usually afterwards. <laughs> yeah, very good. Well, this won't do. No, it <coughs> certainly won't. What's the trouble? Look, Ma, if I was in any trouble, wouldn't I tell you the whole story? No. Well, I would. <laughs> there just isn't any story. That's what I'm beginning to think. Where's your typewriter? My typewriter? Oh, it, it's around someplace. Yeah, where is your typewriter? It's a... Say, what is this, an inquisition? Wait a minute. Eddie! <laughs> See, you, uh, you found it. You was gonna let that go in Eddie's jumble sale, wasn't you? That was a general idea. And a fine idea, I must say. You, a writer, and getting rid of the faithful friend what has set down your every word, why, it's like, like... Sherlock Holmes flogging Dr. Watson. Eddie! <laughs> I don't know what it's like. How is you going to work without it? Maybe I don't need it anymore. Yeah. Maybe I need a change. Use my hands. Find me something healthy in open air, like the building tray. The building tray. What do you know about the building tray? Well, I could learn, couldn't I? At least it pays wages. Well, I've known him dispirited before, but never like this. Perhaps I'd better go. And Joyce, far be it from me to interfere. What did you say? I didn't say anything. Well, don't. <laughs> but if you in sympathise with him now, you've had it. Shock treatment, that's what he wants. Jolt some confidence into him. Well, it'll take dynamite, but I'll try. Ah, uh, I'll handle the pep talk. Oh, but Ma... You stand by for blasting. <laughs> Jeff, I never thought you was a quitter. Oh, Ma, do me a favour, will you? Lay off. Oh, snap out of it, Jeff. There's nothing the matter with you or your writing. It's just that you've got the wrong approach, that's all. You've been going to the wrong school. The wrong school? Oh, I read, you know. I read. There was an article in the paper last Sunday all about authors. It was entitled, Is Literature Doomed? I thought of you. Thanks. It seems it's all a matter of what school you go to, whether you go to the old school or the new school. Now, the new school is frank... Curious and fearless. You belong to the old school. I do. Now, the man who wrote this article... <laughs> Don't belonged... tell me. Uh, let me guess. The new school. This man suddenly realised that his life was hollow mockery and he was straightway plunged into a fathomless well and scourged with the white-hot barbs of, of truth. It swept over him like a wave. Pneumonia? Anger. <laughs> Bitter, biting, all-consuming anger. Well, can you blame the guy? What writer likes being flogged, drowned and struck by lightning? I mean, uh... It's bad enough with the critics. Do you mind? He rebelled against the old order. And the flame of anger burned within him until it became a blazing beacon. And he scorched through all opposition like a comet. Where is he today? I don't know, but I hope it's fireproof. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> that man is at the top of his profession. His works have seared across the literary world like a flaming sword. Mark, can I open a window of the heat? Sit down. <coughs> that man today is rich and famous. His name is a household word. And tell me, who exactly is this incendiary genius? Come on, Ma, you can tell me. It's funny I forgot. But look, that's not the point. You mean all this has a point? Well, of course it has. That man got where he is today simply through being angry. And what he can do, you can do. Huh? You are going to become an angry young man. Oh, no, Ma. No. Well, you can get angry, can't well, you? Well, given reasonable grounds. Now, look, was you or was you not on the very brink of contemplating manual labor? I was. You was. And would any male member of this family do that in his right mind? He would not. Now. <laughs> Who's this publisher? What's that? Your book, six months. Uh, Humboldt. Gregory Humboldt. Right. You can start getting angry on him. What's his number? Oh, no, I don't think this is a very good idea. It never pays to rush these people, well, you know. Well, you can try, can't you? Why, he's had it six months. It's high time he made up his mind. Well, we're going to make up his mind for him. Right. Hello. Mr. Jefferson Rogers wishes to converse with Mr. Humboldt, please. On a personal matter concerning business. Well, you'd better look sharp, because Mr. Rogers doesn't like to be kept waiting. He's very angry. In fact, he's working himself up into a frenzy right now. All right, all right, I'll try and calm him down. You get hold of Humboldt. That's got her thinking out. Come on, work oh, yourself Oh, no, I up. can't do it. Think of something mad and concentrate. Oh, all right, oh. That's I right, get rid of it. That's all right. Oh, She's oh, 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 it over. Oh, Thank you very much. Oh, 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 Give it up, oh, you oh, are. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Help me sit down, mate. Yes, sir. Oh, I feel like the lost <coughs> weekend. On ice? Jokes? Just get over them. Oh. Ada, what's the matter? What's the matter? I just had him right and you had a prance in. I never pranced, Ada. I <laughs> tottered. Ada, fix me one of your specials, will you, mate? I'll fix you. It's all your own fault. If you will stay out all hours, frequenting sinks of iniquity. I was not. Ooh! <laughs> I was not in no sinks. A gutter or two, maybe, but no sinks. Anyway, last night was something special. Don't do that, mate. <laughs> it, was, it was a reunion dinner. You know, my old mob. Now, surely a man is entitled to go out and... and no, he's not. Not when it takes six men to bring him back. And if that's our <laughs> reunion, thank you. It's a pity you ever was a fire watcher. And you can take that silly grin off your face. I haven't finished with you yet. <laughs> finished with you? What's the matter, mate? Oh, nothing that Ma can't fix, I'm afraid. She's reconditioning my career. Your career? Here, that reminds me. Oh. Now, I must remember not to do that. Is my head still on? Yeah, it's just worked a little loose, that's all. What were you going to say? Oh, yeah, wait a minute. I've got it here somewhere. Ah, oh, here it is, mate. Hey, does that name mean anything to you? Burlington Thrush. Yeah, where'd you get this? He gave it to me, of course. He gave it to you? Huh? Not the Burlington Thrush. Could there be two fellas with a name like that? <laughs> but where? When? Last night at our do, he was the guest of honor. I'll tell you the truth, I never even heard of him. But they told me he was in your line. He's an uh, uh, author or publisher or something, isn't he? Author and publisher. Go on. He backs it both ways, doesn't he? Yes. In the literary world, his name is a household word. Where have I heard that before? Heard what? No, oh, never mind. So you met the great man, eh? Oh, I did more than meet him, mate. I fixed you up. <laughs> oh, thanks. You what? Oh. Oh, I fixed you up. Yeah, they told me that he was a very decent fellow, always trying to help struggling young authors. So I got talking to him and I played me cards right. You mentioned my book? Naturally. Did he seem interested? Well, he's not coming over here just for the ride. Coming here? Burley, coming yeah, here? There you are. 4.30 this afternoon, so have that script to yawn ready, won't you? Oh, I will, Pop, I will. Gee, I don't know what to say. Well, thank you, wouldn't it? <laughs> Thanks, Pop, thanks a million. <laughs> All right, Matt McKinney, here's the relief. Oh, I'll say it again, Ada, you are an angel. Yeah, man.
Ma, my future has just taken an unexpected twist. Now, twist it back before you bust. But, Ma, you don't understand. I don't have to be angry anymore. Guess who's coming here this afternoon? Burlington Thrush. I don't get it. Burlington? That's the man who wrote the article. The angry fireball. Never. Burlington belongs to the old school. And not anymore. He doesn't. He burned it down last Sunday. If you could have read that up... He's coming here? Yes, sir. Be here at 4.30. It's all fixed. He wants to see my book. Well, we'll have to get it back from the other fella. From Humboldt? Oh, it doesn't matter about that. Well, it doesn't matter about that. I've got plenty of copies I could show you him. You can't give a man like Burlington Thrush a copy. No? He's got to have an original if anybody has. Oh. Hello? I want to speak to Mr. Humboldt, please. Oh, right. I suppose his secretary would do. Shove it on. I'll inform Mr. Humboldt, madam, but really this is most unusual. Who's that? Mr. Jefferson Rogers wants his script back by 4.30 this afternoon. It comes about. Rogers? Rogers? He sent us the script of the novel about six months ago. Oh, did I like it? No. Did I read it? No. Did anyone read it? No. Hmm. Now he asked his script back out of the blue. I shall never understand these modern authors. Well, if he wants to shilly-shally, let him have the confounded thing. By 4.30 this afternoon. Heavens above, no. Does he think we're jet propelled or something? Why should he have it back by 4.30 this afternoon? He has another prospect in view. Thrush is calling on him this afternoon. Oh, is it? Well, I think I should like to meet this Mr. Rogers. Yes, have we his address? Well, it'll be on his script, but Thrush is calling at 4.30 this afternoon. Oh, I shall call on him this afternoon then at 3.30. Look out the script, will you, and put it in my briefcase. I might look at it on the way. Yes, Mr. Humboldt. Myrtle. Yes, Mrs. Love. What are you doing? Practice the deportment? No, Mrs. Love. Well, put them down. Myrtle, are you sure your mother can spare you? Oh, yes. I was afraid she could. <laughs> Hello, let's look at you. How about that, Mars? That shirt angry enough? Yes, but you don't go with that sloppy looking tie. What do you suppose is infuriating the shirt? Oh. <laughs> Enter the Demon King. <laughs> what are you supposed to be, Dracula? You asked me to be a bohemian and I'm being it. Oh, don't be so stupid. You met Burlington Thrush last night and he was clean shaven. What's he going to think this is, the five o'clock shadow? You're right. <laughs> I'll be a bare face, Bohemian. You're not right? going to be anything at all. You only put your foot right in it. You go in there and stay out of the way. Yeah. Now, Myrtle. Oh, I don't think I'd better be Bohemian. I'm no good at accent. You're going to be noisy at all. Now, I want you, as soon as I tip you to the wink, to go to the nearest phone box. You got any coppers? Yes, a few, I think. Well, here's two, Bob. Get some more. And keep on phoning this number. Mrs. And Love. no matter what I say to you, keep on phoning. Oh, Mrs. Love, is always Keep so... on ringing until I tell you to stop. <laughs> oh, that's him. And out early. This way, Myrtle. Oh, Quick. Love, go always... on. Action station! <laughs> I want a living background. Don't forget, Eddie, you answer the door. Here we go. Good afternoon. Won't you come in? Oh, uh, oh you must excuse the muck, but you know what us Bohemians is. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> That's my sister Joyce. She's a musical. Oh, charming. <laughs> uh, meet the mater. Enchante. <laughs> Edward, you can go on with your sculpting. Yes, Mater. You'll have to forgive him and his heaven, all this talent, you know. Oh. It's gone to his little head. Oh. You wanted it? Oh, yes, I wanted to see Mr. Rogers about his manuscript. Oh, uh, well, we'll see if we can arrange an interview later. Later, madam, but... We my... can't disturb him now. It might have diabolical repercussions on his emotional balance, and we don't want that, do we? No, oh, I suppose we don't, really. Oh. 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 Uh, wonder luck, you know. He will be back and not. Oh, I sincerely hope so. Oh. Our composer. Oh. Beethoven? Joyce Beethoven, her pen name, you know. <laughs> She's just knocking off a little symphony that goes surprisingly well, you know. <laughs> oh, no, 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 dear. It'll never go well if you pixie Carter. You have to guide her. <laughs> ah, excuse us. Hello? It's only me. Oh, so welcome. <laughs> no, no, she's nearly finished. She's right on the last knockings, as you may say. Goodbye. <laughs> The Malcolm Sergeant, he buys all her stuff, you know, she just can't churn out enough. No, I'm sure she can't. <laughs> and over here we have Edward, oh. whom you have met. Life to him is just one long carve-up. <laughs> like you with me with the modern school. Oh, yes. No, 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 dear, I don't think you've got it quite right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, life is just 
just knock one too. <laughs> Hello? It's me again. No, 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 you can't have Edward. He's there echoing away like a beaver. You'll just have to make do with Henry Moore. Goodbye. <sighs> uh, you paint. <laughs> Naturally. Of course, you just can't get the materials, you know. And this is not much cop without the undercoat. <laughs> it's all very well for Rembrandt and them lots. Yes. But us moderns just have to make do with what's going. Yes, that's right. It's no good the mood's gone. <laughs> That's not Burlington Frush. It's not? No, Pa says he saw him through the door. It's not the guy he met last night. Well, then who is he? I don't know. I'll find out. <laughs> who are you? Uh, my name is Humboldt. You're Humboldt? Uh, don't go into a paroxysm. Yes, I have your script here, and I frankly admit I like it very much. Uh, well, you're too late. Burlington Frush wants it. Uh, so I understand, but I did have the script first, you know. <laughs> Excuse me. Ring off. You're out of order. Burlington <laughs> Frush is off his head. I understand Mr. Thrush had an appointment with you for 4.30 this afternoon. Yes, he did. I'm very really sorry, but Mr. Thrush will be unable to keep that now. Oh, when then? Well, he's leaving for Canada in the morning, so I'm afraid whatever business you had with him will have to be postponed indefinitely. Oh. So sorry to inconvenience you like this. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, you had the script for six long months you had that script. And what did you do with it, eh? Keep out of this, Ma. I'll tell you what to do with it. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. Don't give me that small talk. I'm wise to you. Jess, will you Look, Ma, you want to be mad? No, I'm good in that. Where are you? Oh, there you are. You want to look at the script while you thought if he wanted it, it must be worth wanting. Oh. That's the truth, isn't it? Well, I had to make like you said. Okay, Mr. Almost, you had your chance. The answer's nuts. Yes, yes. come here. Mr. Rogers, since you what? seem determined to do business with Frush, uh, look, m m m Mr. Humboldt, yes. maybe we can fix up something. After all, if Mr. Frush is a friend of yours... He is no friend of mine, I assure you. A business acquaintance? <laughs> you know the guy? I do not know the guy, as you call him, and I'm very careful with whom I associate. I have never set eyes on Mr. Frush, and what I hear I don't want to. I cannot stand overbearing men with black beards. Hey, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, did Jeff tell you Get about... Get that fungus back on. I... And this. What's this, sir? And this. Right. Quick. Right. <laughs> Not that way. Can you explain either? Oh, we're out card. Oh, come on. I really must be going, Mr. Frost. Oh, now, what's the hurry? Uh, Stick around. I, I, I see no point in sticking around since you don't seem to be interested in my offer. Now, wait a minute. You didn't make me an offer. Yeah, I was about to, but since you seem to prefer thrush, I will go. Now, look, if Ma says stay, you stay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Do I take it then that you've reconsidered? Well, I'm sort of toying with the idea. And what about Burlington Trust? Well, what I always say is first come, first serve. Now, what was that offer you were on beyond the point of being about Jefferson, to... Jefferson, ah, really. we mustn't forget Burlington Thrush, must we? But you said... He Edward, said... answer the door. The door? But, but... You could have been there by now. <laughs> he will leave everything to the last minute. Uh, that is probably Mr. Burlington Thrush. In that case, I'll go. Oh, dear me, no. <laughs> I think he's entitled to a crack of the whip, don't you, Jefferson? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Good afternoon, oh, one and all. No. Ah, Rogers, me boy, this is a pleasure. Dr. Livingston, I presume? Well, stop. Now then, Ed, don't keep Burlington Thrush hanging about. Where's the manuscript? Let's wrap it up and I'll be off it. Uh, not so fast. Uh, Mr. Burlington Thrush, may I present Mr. Humboldt? How do you do? Mind your own business. <laughs> now, don't take any notice of me. That's me nature. I'm overbearing, off-headed and rude. I insult people and scare them to death. If I could get indigestion, I'd make me fortune. Now then, my man, what can I do for you? Really? Uh, by a strange coincidence, Mr. Humboldt is also interested in Jefferson's script. Is that not so, Mr. Humboldt? Yes. Oh? Oh, well, speaking as one literary merchant to another, who asked you to shove your fat nose in? I'm having that script, so I'll be... No, look, Miss, Mr. Humboldt had first refusal and he was about to make an no, offer. No, on second thoughts, no. Oh, well, sure, eh? Come here. Make the boy an offer. I can't tolerate this. You uh, force yourself. Make the boy an offer. Very well. I would be prepared to make you an advance, say, of 20. 25. Any advance? 30. 35. No, no, no. 37 and 6. <laughs> <laughs> I, of course, am bidding in guineas. <laughs> uh, all right, then. 40 guineas. 50. 60. 70. 80. 90. Do you, you mind? mind? Sorry, I'm not <laughs> 
Very well. One hundred, and that is my final offer. Yes. Oh, One hundred and fifty. Shut up! Uh, uh, do go on, no, Mr. Humboldt. No, no, Mr. Thrust, you go on. I retire. Yeah, oh, Mr. Humboldt, look. You said you were interested no, in my manuscript. So I am, but that man seems determined to outbid me, so that's you know, my, my point is well, Look, 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 Mr. Humboldt, sir. I think if you were to make one bid, one final bid, that nobody else would say a word. Very well, then, and this is my final offer. Yes, yes. Two hundred guineas. Game and set to Mr. Humboldt. Come on, let's sign the check straight away, shall we? I couldn't get through. Oh, whatever are you doing to Mr. Larkin? Matto! Punch right, man! Manuscript, I don't know who wrote the script you sent me, but it certainly wasn't you. What? You're as big a fake as the rest of your family. You can't even write your own name. All right, man. Ah. Here we go. Oh. 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 Consider yourself bound. Oh. Men with black beards. How oh, I hate men with black beards. Why? They remind me of Burlington Thrush. I am Burlington Thrush. <laughs> no! Imposter! Critic! <laughs> Which of you threw that idiot at me? Mr. Frush! That appointment. Decided to keep it after all. If I'd only were moving, wouldn't have bothered. Oh, Mr. Frush, I'm so pleased that... Look, sit down, mate. Please. No small inconvenience can assure you. You've been unwell all day or the top of my head being removed by pneumatic drills. How is yours, by the way? Fine. Well, don't gloat, confound you. Mr. Thrush, I know just what you need. Now, uh, you must be young Rogers, I take it. This script of yours, let's have a look at it. Well, yeah, but uh, Humboldt has the original, but I still have a couple of copies. Young man, if this manuscript is genuine, there are no copies. Genuine? I don't understand. Your father-in-law told me you had old manuscript. Could be original Dickens. Well, where is it? You mean that that is the manuscript you came to see? Well, of course. You're not interested in any other manuscript? Devil take all other manuscripts. Oh, brother. Oh, Jeff, boy. Jeff, oh, I'm sorry. I could have sworn. Go right ahead. I'll join oh, you. I must have made a mistake. Last night, I wasn't myself, you see, because... Well, it doesn't matter. I understand. Anybody can make a mistake. I'm afraid you had a wasted journey. Yeah, worthless. You were trying to pass this off as an original don't Dickens. Don't give me any of that, Don't jazz. talk to me like that. I'll talk to you any darn way I please. If you only knew. Oh, fooey. You impudent young pup. No, 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 no. Mr. Frush, look, it's all my fault. You see, Jeff himself is a writer. Oh, well, one of the angry young men, obviously. Good and right. angry, and you can quote that. Come here. Tell me, what are you angry about? What am I angry about? There, you see, he doesn't even know. None of them do, confounded modern school. But uh, I thought you were the headmaster of that school. Rubbish. <laughs> Loathe modern school and abominate so-called angry young men. You chameleon. You pompous, bee-whiskered turn. Don't you touch me. Oh, Here we go again. Oh, no. no. Oh. Where's Mr. Thrush? He just left. Ah, oh, what a shame. I've got something for his head. Last time I saw him, he was standing on it. Oh, dear. Oh, there you are. Are you feeling all right? I have never been so insulted. I'll go on, you must have been. <laughs> I'm just a death door, make this fruitless journey. I'm greeted by beard-pulling maniacs. I'm abused, I'm assaulted, I'm thrown out. Drink that. Thank you. <laughs> and now you try to poison me. No! Borgia! No, I think that's the odd lot at number six. No! No! But it takes them all different ways. Oh, Mum, take that silly notice off. No. Yesterday's horrible fiasco was all my fault, and I'm doing my penance. But Jeff knows you acted for the best. And in any case, that doesn't help. What's done's done. I am doing my penance. Oh. <coughs> Hello, Larkins. Mrs. Larkins, Burlington Flush here. Just want to thank you for saving my life yesterday. That gorgeous special you gave me worked a miracle. Arrived home a new man. Well, the old one wasn't much to ride home about. I mean. <laughs> I heard you, Mrs. Larkins, and I agree. Tell you the truth, a little bit hazy about yesterday. You mean you don't remember? Not clearly. Do remember meeting your son-in-law? Oh, Jeff, and a meeker, milder young man you couldn't wish to melt butter in the mouth of. What about him? As I arrived at your house, met man leaving. Rather a hurry. Knocked me down. In the scuffle, briefcases must have got mixed. He went off with mine, I went home with his. Name him briefcase, Humboldt. Oh, I do dimly recall that name. It isn't important. Inside briefcase, manuscript of novel. Jeff? Precisely. 
Now, last night, head, thanks to you, clear as a bell, read novel, liked it. On way to airport now. When I get back from Canada, want to meet young man. Will you tell him that? I'll tell him, have a good trip. Watch your parachute for mother. Always goodbye. <laughs>